Hey, what's going on everyone? Hawks21 here, back with another Splinterlands video. So we're gonna do another sort of shorter two battle video like I've been doing. Both have been around 12 minutes, which I think is a good length of time. So the first two had sort of themes, right? The first one was snipe, think hard about how you're positioning your monsters, step two. Video two was kind of like, all right, you know, there's a, there's a luck factor, right? I know I'm telling you to spend some time thinking about how you play your monsters and you know use the two minutes etc but also don't get too frustrated because you know at times you just got to tip your cap to your opponent they're going to win matches this one's more fun it, if i was going to talk about these two battles i would say the theme is kind of like selling out but i just think these are kind of fun battles there's a mechanic in the second one that i tested for the first time that i think could be really fun um but yeah, uh, these battles are kind of just having fun. But I guess if I had to talk about this one strategically, I would wait until after I tell you to subscribe. So I am Hawks21. I cover Splinterlands here on the channel. It's an awesome game. You can earn some money playing a uh, playing a really fun video game. I mean, there's not really much else to say other than that. So if you're interested, if you want to learn more, you've come to the right place. I cover gameplay. I cover strategy. I cover the marketplace, I cover it all. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I would love to welcome you to my expanding community. Okay, so selling out. If you look here, it's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm using a lot of, of the new cards, right? This is a Soulbound Reward card. The Ravenhood Warden, the Protect plus the Inspire. One of the newer Dragon Reward cards. Um, you know, not the Soulbound ones, one of the previous ones. Bruise, a recent promo card. You know, this is an older card, obviously. Then a Chaos Legion, Silent Chevy. But we are selling out to the sneak. You know, my opponents are doing kind of like a half version of it, right? Three monsters are supposed to do a sneak attack. Then you got two monsters attacking the front. I don't know if you should be splitting up your attacks like that. And I, you know, I somewhat solved this problem for them, honestly, playing Lily. Um, I would say that's one of the downsides of Lily. So in my head, I want them all focusing on Elmo. But if there was to be a downside of Lily, it's that if your opponent splits their attacks, that can sometimes be a good thing for you. Um, in this case, it wouldn't be a good thing for me because I have some glass cannons back here. Uh, and I need to keep them alive. So that's why I had everything go to the Elmo. But basically what I'm betting here is I'm going to go all out sneak and I'm going to eliminate your backline monsters, your key cards before you can get through the Alamo. One time too, right? I'm not bringing any heals. I mean, there is no heal, but I'm not bringing any protects, not bringing any resurrects. I am just saying I'm going to do so much damage to your backline that you're not even going to have remotely close to enough time to get through the Alamo. Let's see how it plays out. I mean, just look at the damage. For 38 mana, right? I'm doing 5, 8, so that's 13, 3, 16, 3, 19, double strike, 22. So for 38 mana, I'm getting 32, not just 32 damage. I'm getting 32 backline damage. That's a really, really, really difficult to defend against. Specifically when I bring a shield, right? Even, like, I don't even know what you could play back there. Realistically, what you would probably have to play is something with um, force field to at least knock these down to one. But even in that case, one, two, this is six. So you're talking about 11 damage still. That's most likely gonna get through almost anything you put down there in turn one or turn two anyways. So this is a really tough strategy to beat. It's just so much backline damage. And you'll see how it plays out. It plays out exactly how you would expect. That's the other thing. They're pretty fast monsters. You know, this is like a this is a really awesome sneak play. You know, we're still in round one and we've taken out two of their sneak mon I mean two of their backline monsters. And again, they just have to go through the Almo. And they're just, it's just, they just don't have enough time. We're getting misses. 
Again, next round, we take out two more of their monsters. And boom. Just, you know. Quick little, I think it's going to be a four round battle. Yeah. Just a quick four round battle because we just overpowered them. So don't be afraid to sell out. If you see an opportunity to go for something heavy, double down, triple down, quadruple down, make it happen. All right, so this one, could, you could kind of say the same thing. It's more convenient that I just happen to all be firing in the first direction. But one thing I will say, it's, it's not like I, I didn't do that by accident, right? That was planned. It's specifically important to sell out when you have equalizer. You don't want to, when everyone's going to have 13 health, for example, you don't want to be firing all over the place. You don't want to bring Yasek here. You don't want to bring half sneak, half front. There's just too much health to get through if you're not selling out in one direction. So here I'm selling out in one direction, but I'm also bringing a pretty fun and cool mechanic. So I made a video on Zeriel a long time ago. I still don't own it, but the same person who delegated me Zeriel last time delegated it to me again, um, mainly because I think they, they're still botting their account in wild. So the bot doesn't really play Zeriel ever. So they said, you know what? Delegated it to me and I love this card. Love it, love it, love it. So as you can see, I'm firing straight to the front every single time. The fun dynamic here is we have weapons training from Zeriel here and here. I decided, you know what? Let's just play around. Let's bring another weapons training monster because I've never double weapons trained someone before. So eventually I believe this gets the three magic attack, which would give this the ripped wing two magic damage. But think about this. In the base concept, once you max this card out, you could have a rift wing with two magic damage and three archery damage every single turn. That's ridiculous. So that's kind of the dynamic. I haven't seen anyone actually try this yet. So that's kind of why I wanted to post it. And I, you know, I don't really know how this could fit in with other things, but it is kind of talking about selling out. Sorry, if you hear that crazy noise in the background, they're doing, I live in the Midwest and they're doing some pretty crazy flyover stuff right now. Um, so apologize. But yeah, so you can see we're doing a ton of damage. The true strike is so great. But look at this Rift Wing. This Rift Wing is just fun. Like a double attack Rift Wing <laughs> is a pretty crazy thing. It's also going to be scavenging health. Like it's, it just got an elimination and then scavenged health. Plus, you know, we're talking about Resurrects. So it's just going to be extra health to be scavenged. Double Resurrect. I just had a lot of fun with this uh, with this battle in particular. Now, oh, it got one of its archery attacks back. So my Rift Wing's doing four damage every turn. Do they? Get, they must get through the. Do they get through the nightmare at all? They might not. <laughs> Rift Wing, another elimination. So yeah, selling out plus fun with it. They don't. They don't even get through the. Nightmare. So another four round battle. So, I mean, that one was more just to show off the Rift Wing, I'm going to be honest. I, I was just laughing during that video. Somehow it says I had a 50% win rate, but I, I don't think that's true. I think it was a lot higher than that, clearly. Um, I don't know if they know how to account for double attacks there, but yeah, that was just a really fun battle. Selling out to the front, specifically an equalizer. In the first battle, I'm selling out with an absurd amount of sneak damage. So if I were to come up with the theme of this one, don't be afraid to sell out. You can have some really interesting, fun combinations. And a lot of times you can completely overwhelm your opponent. All right, I'm going to stop it there. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will talk to you soon and see you around the game.